Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video looks at alliances. Uh, so alliances are one of the methods of entering international markets that you need to be aware of. And so <coughs> an alliance occurs when there's an agreement between two or more companies to pool their resources to undertake a specific project. That specific project is uh, usually entering an international market. Uh, I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, we've got Marks and Spencers in uh, the Middle East and we'll have a look a bit at uh, that in a bit more detail on the next slide. And an example I've used before which is uh, Cherry, a, uh, a Chinese car manufacturer and Jaguar Land Rover. <coughs> One of the requirements of the Chinese government for a business to operate in China is that there needs to be a local partner involved. And so um, Jaguar Land Rover wanted to enter the Chinese market, <coughs> a rapidly growing market where they do sell a lot of cars. And uh, Cherry, or Cherry, I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced, wanted um, to gain the expertise that Land, Jaguar Land Rover, the prestige of that brand, um, uh, to share information, create synergies. And so the, the, the deal is mutually uh, beneficial for, for both parties. And the company created was Cherry Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, it's a good example for, for joint ventures and also alliances. Alliances are very similar to joint ventures. Two or more companies coming together, they're pooling their resources and they're undertaking a specific project. Um, so this is a clipping from the Marks and Spencers website. Um, it says here, working with our international franchise partners helps extend the reach of the M&S brand to even more customers around the world. This model enables us to benefit from our partners, uh, local market expertise, and gain better access to prime retail location. Our partners include uh, the Alpha Tame Group, uh, which is a <coughs> very big trading group located in the Middle East. If you wanted to, you could pause that. But basically, uh, to operate a business in the Middle East, much uh, in many Middle Eastern countries, particularly the United Arab Emirates, where I'm currently based, you do need to have a, um, a partner a local partner in order to do that and so Marks and Spencers uh, work with Alpha Tame in order to uh, well it says here gain local market expertise and access to prime retail locations so by partnering up it obviously benefits Marks and Spencers and the Alpha Tame group will benefit as well because they get to share some of the uh, profits so <coughs> what are the pros of alliances well, mostly for the business that's looking to internationalise, i.e. Marks and Spencers, that's looking to move into uh, markets like the Middle East, having a locally owned company, it's, it's a legal requirement. They can't do it without um, a local partner. So, you know, the other, uh, other options of internationalisation, such as direct investment, where you go and build a factory overseas, it's not necessarily open to Marks and Spencers in uh, markets like the Middle East and China. Uh, we're going to gain local knowledge and know-how. We can, uh, which is basically, you know, the synergies that we talked about when two organisations come together, and uh, the two organisations working together creates more benefits than those organisations could achieve on their own. In the case of uh, Marks and Spencers, Alpha Tame. Uh, we'll have connections in the government, which makes it much easier for Marks and Spencers to gain the prime retail locations, like in Dubai Mall, that they want. And um, um, uh, Alpha Tame benefit from working from Marks and Spencers. Uh, Marks and Spencers will be able to uh, tell them things about branding, uh, the products that they sell, etc. Uh, and uh, Alpha Team, of course, benefit from. Um, uh, the profits that they're going to share. Finally, um, Marks and Spencers and uh, uh, Jaguar Land Rover can be advised about cultural differences. They may already have market research, uh, you know, uh, be able to advise them on managing staff or marketing campaigns. All of that kind of thing uh, can be done if two organisations come together and they share their knowledge. However, um, this may require the divulgence of intellectual property to partners. In other words, you might have to tell 
uh, your international partners, things that you want to keep to yourself because it creates some sort of competitive advantage for you. So that may uh, be a uh, concern for people. We're going to need to share the profits that we earn. Um, you know, it's difficult to work with other people. We see this in, you know, the very simple example of sole traders moving to partnerships. Different people have different objectives. Equally, different businesses may have different objectives. And certainly over time, those objectives may start to um, differ. For example, Alfred Tame might want to see Marks and Spencers expanding uh, more quickly than Marks and Spencers would like to, and there might be pressure uh, to do that. And of course, we need to manage the cultural differences. M&S essentially is a British management team. Um, Alpha Tame um, are based in Dubai, so there may well be cultural differences between the management teams. And it's important to have cultural awareness um, and to understand each other in order to make the alliance successful.